So um, this is about Mendix development training, a development ap application platform. I'll go through with the Mendix develop process, how, we, how, how to start with it and everything. Myself, and I have a 12 years of experience in application development with various roles since, since front-end developer, back-end developer, and also have a low-code experience with Mendix and OutSystems. Mendix is a low-code platform and performed as a senior developer. Mendix architect leaded many projects with the Mendix platform, contributed to the Mendix forums where a lot of Mendix users ask a lot of questions about how they want, they come, they come up with a problem and they will ask several questions in the Mendix forums. So it's a like open channel where anybody can throw out and question about like about their company working on some piece of logic and they're stuck somewhere. They couldn't be able to understand how the Mendix works and how they could mitigate their problem and try to get a solution. Um, if none of their developers could solve some solution, they will throw it into the forums and out of, I pretty much contribute every week and give um, solutions to the forums uh, for several complex problems they are asking. And train entry-level developers in the previous organization when I was a Mendes architect, I had a 15 plus developers I trained who doesn't have any experience in the Mendix completely and also worked along with them on the new projects in TCS working for Siemens. And this is my developer profile for Mendix where you could see my number of years of experience in Mendix and how, how, it, how the profile looks like. Usually, whenever you have a Mendix profile, it shows you how much experience or how much you are contributing towards a development platform. The platform will number you with some kind of a numbering strategy. They have put up like one, two, three, four, five, six um, until 11. Shows as a 11 is a top developer or expert developer in Mendix and um, starts with one as a very starter developer to the Mendix. So today's scope of the demo, which is a Mendix and Mendix project. And let's talk about the Mendix Studio Pro, the UI platform where we use pretty much to develop the things and try to deploy into the cloud where we could see the application and application life lifecycle management, how the DevOps piece integrated with the application so that it, the development could be part of it, everything in wrapped into one place and application development using Studio Pro. I have a Studio Pro open, I'll go through it. Okay, and how to create a project and everything. A quick demo of it. So let's talk about Mendix. So Mendix is a low-code platform. Um, low-code platform in general, there are several low-code platforms in the market. But um, usually a low-code platform is an application development method that elevating the code in a tech, from textual to visual. Like um, we are used to writing the code textually since all the Angular JS or any, any, anything you mentioned in Java is a traditional coding that's called textual method. And whereas this is a visual method of development is called low-code development. So this kind of a coding environment operates like a model driven where we do drag and drop interface, all development skill levels, like you know anybody who has a professional experience or a subject matter expert or a business stakeholders or a decision maker, somebody, you name it, anybody in the, in the company, like a business analyst, and uh, somebody could use a platform to require to their skill set. Like, you know, everybody can contribute to the platform in somehow either development or a planning or a deployment or you name it, anything, anybody can contribute on the platform based on their based on their skill set to the platform. So that's about uh, it. And coming to the Mendix, Mendix is one of the industrial leading all-in-one low-code application development platform that helps organization build a big experience enterprise-grade applications. When I say enterprise, that's really huge applications where you can integrate anything from outside world. So anything you can do with Java, AngularJS outside, I mean, Mendix is built on the top of the Java and also on various JavaScript, like even they use ReactJS. But when compared to the Java code, you don't have to code anything, right? It's on the, built on the top of it, like a visual thing. So we could, do, we could still manage to get to the enterprise level of applications 99% for sure. Still, till to date, I have several applications did very, very minimal, could say like, oh, we can't do this with this platform. So other than that, and it's also scalable, 
and the platform is designed to accelerate the entire development life cycle when i said life cycle a start of the project from ideation to a deployment and operation completely from ideation to operations this platform is a useful for each and every team members so developers of various skill set like i just said before a multi application could be anybody a hundred and mature junior developer to an expert developer could contribute it. i'll give an example how it how it does so basically if as a fresh developer um, um a developer who just joins knows a little bit of it like html or css or something he could use a platform to certain level being an experienced for you can take an example of myself who came from the background of javascript i have 10 years of 12 years of experience out of that 7 years i've coded using traditional coding when i have to use low code i pretty much code myself i i use java I use javascript coding directly in the platform as well so basically the platform let you code as well at the same time you can do coding in the platform and also use the inbuilt drag and drop as well so when you say coding you something you find out component outside mendix is available in react js or somewhere java you can use that code and come back to mendix and build that for yourself like a connector or component so that is mendix for the experienced developers who can use the platform different developer various skill sets and again um without a single line of code even it is possible without even single line of code like a business analyst can code as well make an application with logic and everything that's about mendix and um coming to the next part about mendix project look or look at features like you know so i talked about visual modeling right so how we utilize the drag and drop features and everything that's a visual modeling and mendix supports a lot of um reusable components so when i say components uh, we have something called marketplace so you should able to see a marketplace in mendix let me see let me open an app let's create a new app so i'll just show you quickly when you create a new it will take long time okay so anyway so this is the components if you see here even i'm trying to create a new app we should be able to see a new app already i can directly click this app a start app which is already a created app and it automatically you will see all the um app features you see this this particular app what you're seeing it will be visible this is like reusable components and you can leverage this like you know you can is asset manager app like this there is a lot of uh, reusable components already available which can be utilized and also you can develop it at the same time there is a uh, widgets and lot of stuff which we can reuse it collaboration tools um especially when you are working on a team right agile methodology the scrum team like whatever the team when we have a um scrum team so we should be able to do some kind of a story writing around it and we could able to assign the task and we should able to see like you know sprint one sprint two and everything so we should able to complete that collaboration tool between the team members like a scrum master or lead developer a developers and a business analyst everybody can put as a collaboration tool so that they can try to complete like ideation whatever the project ideation starts from they can put everything into it and scalable environments the um, like mendix support scalability based on the requirements it automatically scalable and data integration uh, it it is integrated with lot of several even third party apps and also the legacy systems you know somebody might have old oracle system mendix is not oracle system right so but still we have a integration possibilities for any kind of uh, existing databases we should able to use it and uh, application application life cycle management which is um, a part of it like um, what we do is uh, part of our application life cycle management is to deploy like you know since the ideation you develop and you do testing and you do deploy right deployment is a part of it when you deploy to the cloud it accelerates very faster delivers automate and abstraction level and enable your teams to work iteratively and autonomously basically what it means is autonomously everybody can work on their local instance this is a local environment in your own local even offline i can work on a project i don't have to be like you know some platform some low code platforms are online so you should able to use a local app and just just open it doesn't matter uh, what we use this is a local application where you can run it so it's it's a overall in one in place of application life cycle management of each app and um that's one thing let me open the app meanwhile so 
there's a lot of contrast between the traditional development and no code development okay low code development is better with the, because simple visual development environment whereas a high code like traditional coding it requires special skills and everything it takes long time to learn the coding background and if you are don't have a coding background doesn't matter it's a low code will let you learn quickly the things because it's um, all we need to know is the application life cycle completely how it works from ideation to completion uh, deployment deployment and like you know operations but if you know that life cycle and how to use the tool you can definitely be part of the team mendix mendix project team and contribute towards the projects that's a uh, low code so what else uh, studio pro so let me show you the studio pro this is the look and feel of a studio pro basically a developer works on a studio pro and Mendix Studio Pro. There are like ninth version, even this is the old version a little bit, but we can download the versions from the Mendix profile. So, so we should able to download the Studio Pro, which is available in the marketplace once we log in. And also we should able to directly code in the web app. There is a web app called Mendix app, Mendix Studio. This is Mendix Studio Pro and there is a Mendix Studio online itself. So online is something where you do directly coding in the Google Chrome itself. Like, you know, you should be able to drag and drop and everything. And whereas the Studio Pro is a coding ground where you drag and drop and everything, which is local to yourself. And this is for advanced level. And um, Mendix Studio is for like kind of a business analyst or some, some other non-technical teams in the in the company who could use kind of a drag and drop that's no code required zero code except you know how to write a logic other than that the studio pro is where you do an advanced junior developer advanced developer and an actual developer uses a studio pro because it's a lot of uh, customizations a lot of coding css changes and everything can be done on the platform And Mendix, why Mendix? It's uh, because there is a Gartner report every year. Like, you know, there is a Gartner report. They, say, they tell like which low code is the best to use for the companies and how is the technology evolving day by day. So this is the way you can create a new app. This is like a free app, like where you, we could able to use the free app and um, do kind of a free training and everything on the platform. Uh, generally, you, it's a free, but for the licensed versions, they have to pay something for the user's basis. So this is what it looks like a platform. And this is marketplace. Like I just said before, there's a lot of reusable components or widgets and everything where by default, whatever application needed already in, include in the platform, but there are some things which you want extra, like React drag and drop or some kind of a component, you need to install it based on usage. Some of them are not actually added, like SAP integrator. We, by default, SAP integrator is not in the project. So we, we could able to utilize this developed components or connectors to the outside world as needed. By default, it looks like this and uh, drag and drop. I mean to say, is it, uh, we can be able to add it, a data grid, and we can pass the data to it. And always starts with the domain model. I'll go through quickly with the other one, which is this one. The outline, just quickly go with the outline introduction of Mendix and domain model would be the domain model is the data side. This is the starting point of a Mendix project, how we, try to create a domain model or a data model of what it, the oral app is going to look like. Like, you know, that's our starting point we are going to talk about. So the part of the training would be starting with like, uh, what's our in, initial 
initial business idea and then we convert into a data model like what relations with entity relations the, the database relations everything can be coded on the domain model now the project roles and responsibilities so who are actual users for this application so if we know an application users, then we're going to create a security and we create some, I need to put it to production. When we production, we should be able to create a user roles, administrator user or somebody manager or some roles. So that will, will go through a part of the project. And the um, expat relations is something where we call um, whenever we have a, a data attached to it. What we basically do is we have something called XPath. These are XPath constraints where we use the data to filter the data. So that's a core part of the application where you data, if you're retrieving thousand employees, you want to filter out only the, the employees who are working in certain region. XPath is one constraint, just one thing we use it. Likewise, we use several places for XPath to filter the data and to extract the data what we needed to perform the actions. And you page UI, Atlas UI. Atlas UI is a basic, coming along with the app, which is, which you we look at Atlas UI resources. This is like a theme. They created a theme, like, you know, how you look and feel once you run this application. But if you want to customize it, yes, we can customize the app. So basically going through the theme and the project directory, what I mean to say is that we have a project directory where we can customize the code. We can edit the theme according to our company requirement. So that's uh, part of this theme. And going through the structure, your project with sub microflows, this is part of the logic. So whenever we create a microflow, uh, this is a this is like a function. We can think like in a in a regular world, it's like a function. What when we write, this is like a start and end of a function, like in a function name and end, right? So this is like it. And um, rules, lot of rules coming in between the microflow system members, the main core members of the system entity, the system entity. So system entity is something always can't change this. You can't change this one because this is a user, each user, this is non-editable fields. So we'll talk about that, how we can leverage that system users and try to use it. List operations is something in each, in each year when you add list, right? There is a lot of list operations, how we want to change the list, add the list, modify the list, aggregate the list. There's a lot of list functions we can go through data model optimization. So once we create the domain model, right? So once we have a domain model, yeah, domain model, how do we optimize it? Sometimes there is a right way and wrong way to do it. So we have to go through that optimization so that it doesn't run into performance issues. Um, going back to error handling. So you did a logic, you wrote a logic to call something and show a pop-up. What if something went wrong and what you want to show the user error handling at the same time how you want to handle that error and how you want to show the user that oh sorry you forgot to add your last name so add it so error handling is very important for any application so we will cover the error handling memory management and batches so basically when you're running 100,000 200 or 10 lakh records at a time you will run into the problem where um, you will run into the problem of uh, application crash so that's where you have to handle the application in such a way that you can handle the big batch of records, which is very important because very big companies has lacks of data, which you are going to process and uh, it will run into, you know, an user clicked on something and he wait for half an hour is not a good way of going through, right? So we have to optimize that, that runtime and try to reduce the time to show the data. Logging is very important to know what happened. Uh, sometimes, it's not a visual thing. You have to go to the logs and check in the in the Mendix to see what happened, to find like some application crashed. What happened? We don't know. We need to check in the logs. Client notifications, notifications comes as email or text messages or whatever. We'll kind of a cover. There is a module called email template, email template. So using this, we should be able to create the emails. So we will install this part of it. Every company installs the email module with templates. And we can utilize this when we are calling in a flow, we will drag an email and we will send to a particular user how we want to send. We will talk about that. Convert a web app into mobile app application. So this is a web app, right? So how we convert, how could we convert this app into a mobile app and how can we use the existing logic, what we wrote for web app to mobile app. So basically, if you see here, the navigation is in add navigation profile, right? 
so you should you have various options to create different options like you know in the same platform you can create one more folder here add a module and you can create an own one so if you see that now currently i am seeing only one profile which is response right if i turn on this profile see what happens so hybrid right so if i check the hybrid if i create one more navigation profile see what happens so i will use a phone browser i want no i will check a native mobile directly i, I want to create a native mobile feature so what it does is that it will create a profile basically in the mobile in the in the mobile phone which home pages and which users and everything and also we could able to use the existing logic itself we don't have to basically use the same logic we need to modify some logic to it so basically how we can modify this web we created a web app web application now how we can make it a mobile application and and what changes we needed quickly so it's we can cover that and that's pretty much it for the course outline coming along with the um, mock test we'll go through some kind of a custom widgets where we can customize the widgets according to the requirement and part of the projects we can cover our two applications um thinking about general management and employee management as small applications we can together build part of the labs and that's pretty much it and we can go through the certifications how we want to achieve the certifications in mendix there is a place where we can register and this certified with rapid developer is a very starting one rapid developer certification then it would be intermediate and it would be advanced and there is a expert so three certificate four certifications we have in mendix so this is like starting so once we done with the rapid then we have to so you have to give intermediate only after you give this one so we have to be we could give all this at certain points of time expert can't be given immediately because you have to have a lead developer position served as like two three years you need to get references from a project manager advanced is like you need to have minimum intermediate developer these three are no restrictions but expert is a restriction these are the certification we talked about and we also have a course completion certificate on behalf of mind magics and which you, once you complete the successfully complete the course and thank you for any for attending the demo and if you have any feedback or anything you have to contact for the cost and payment for options please email to info at mind magics and also there's a number available thanks